So let's get started. All right, so the first test that we're gonna see is going to be the show song test. And this is the one where it's going to be the view for when you are playing the game and you have the song and you have the um, like the selected answer, you see the submit button, that's the page that we're gonna go over now. So this is a standard test. So this one is just gonna display the, the show song page, which is exactly what we want. Before we can display anything, um, we have to remember that we have to do some setup, okay? And in this case, the setup is, hey, I need at least one song because when I get to the display page, I wanna be able to show the user that song and everything related to that song. Um, and so the only way to do that is to create a song. So in this case, I've got the song model. This is the song model. And in the song model, I've declared a, I've created a factory class. Essentially what this song factory is going to do is it's going to come up with a random track ID, a random artist name, a random preview, answer, and then um, some random song choices. So this is it. I'm not calling the Spotify API for this. It's a test. So I'm not going, that's a very expensive thing to do. So I'm not going to do that. So instead I've got the song factory and it's going to return to me basically a song with this information on it. And then after that, I'm going to say, Hey, I want to do a live wire test. Um, Cause I'm using live wire on the front end and I'm going to, I want to test the song list class. Now the song list class is, this is a class that displays the song data, handles the submit button, all that good stuff, okay? We know what class we're gonna test. And so because we're using this, we've gotta pass in a few things. I've gotta pass in the song, the count, and the score. I've opted to leave the count and the score at zero, and I'm just passing in that song that I created from this step from here. Um, and if you go back to the song list really quickly, the reason we need to pass those three things in is because on the mount, right here, this method, which loads when you kind of go to the page, it's expecting a song account and a score. So you have to have that information on there. So I'm trying to mimic, mimic the class. I'm trying to mimic this view. Those are the things I'm gonna need. So I then go down, once this setup is done, like this is the setup, we're finished. So once we've got that, what we need to do is make some assertions. I'm just gonna say, hey, assert that the count is set to zero. Assert that the score set is is set to zero okay cool and then i want to do this assertion so this is assert c html in order and essentially what that's doing is saying hey assert that you see these things inside the html in this specific order and so i'm only checking the round and it corresponds to the song id i'm i'm checking to see if the selected song answer text is there i want to make sure that we have that submit button and that the submit button has this specific song id on that submit button and i want to make sure that we see the text submit answer so Boom, that's one part of it. The other part of it is this section here where I wanna say, hey, assert, I see in the HTML, and this is in no particular order. In the view itself, I shuffle these around. So they don't have to be in a specific order. I don't need them to be in a specific order. So that's why it's just assert, see, HTML. And I'm using HTML special characters here because sometimes um, if I'm, for instance, I am using Faker, and that is essentially a package in Laravel where you can just have fake data. And in this case, I'm just grabbing a name, like a random name. And that random name could have apostrophes. It could have quotes. It could have all sorts of things. And so I wanna be able to count for all those without my test breaking. So I, while doing that, I use um, HTML special characters method so it'll count for all the special characters that come from that name. So I can still assert that the song choice at array zero is on this page. And so I follow that same pattern for all of the song choices. And that's it. That's the test in a nutshell. So that's the front end part of this. And we're going to walk through the back end now. So the back end is a little bit more trickier. <laughs> it's uh, not as straightforward. And we have to do a bunch of setup. 
So I am not going to go through every single piece of setup. We're going to talk in a general sense of how we set this test up. And, and we're going to walk it along as we're going through that test. All right. So this, I have an entirely different test class. It is in the Spotify API test class. So the only thing that really we're going to get to first, and we'll go, we'll scroll back up. We'll scroll back up. Don't worry. Um, so we have a test get playlist. And in here, I want to be able to test that I can get the playlist. Why? Because that's what I'm doing when I'm calling the Spotify API. I'm going, I'm getting the playlist. It's giving me all this information back. And I just want to make sure that I can do that. All right. So I've got a setup of some options here. Um, I've got the fields and then it's like got an ID, URI, the market is US because I'm searching the US market for this. And then the expectation is that I get the ID, URI and the US market back. So we've got that as a setup. The next portion is this get fixture playlist. And this is the body. This is what we're saying is the body of this um, response that we're expecting, right? So the get fixture is essentially going to the get fixture method, and which I've defined here. It's inside the test. This is something that lives in my code base. So I can go to it right now and we can search and get the playlist.json data. So let's do that now. So playlist.json is a fixtures okay here is the fixture you see it's a lot <laughs> it's a lot going on here now this again this is just for testing purposes but this is what a response looks like that comes back from spotify so we want to be able to mimic that without actually going to spotify and getting it because that's expensive so this loads this file and then it says, okay, get the contents of this file, which is the contents of playlist.json. And it's like, okay, decode the contents of it. And then it's just gonna return it. So that's what we're getting when we have the playlist data. It's essentially everything that's in this file. It's the response that we get back, right? Now, the other part of this that's very big is I go to a method called setup API and I just named it setup API, but I'm passing to it a git, which, cause this is a git, request and then I'm passing in the URI. Remember the URI up here what we needed. So we want the URI here and the URI that we're going to is v1 playlist slash the playlist ID. Now this is a fake playlist ID. If you try to go to it, it there's nothing there. So uh, this is just a random one that I used for the test. And then I pass in the expected uh, array of data which corresponds to these values here. And then I pass an empty array because I don't need anything in that field. And then I have playlist data here. And this is the expected response that we get back. Now, once we have all of this, we pass all that to the setup API. And we're gonna go to it right now. I mean, okay, yes. So this method just grabs everything that we just talked about the method, the URI, parameters, the headers, we didn't have any, and then the expected return, right? And so what it what this is doing is heading us to a, the reason I broke it down like this is because it kind of, for me, it made sense to just for the flow. You could certainly put this all in one spot and be good to go, and it does the same thing. So I go to the setup request mock, and essentially it's this method, set up request mock and it's just passing down this information this data to this method and what this is doing is it's basically setting up a mock request for me based on these parameters that i put in and i'm telling it to say hey the last response i get should look like the expected return response that i've orchestrated in this playlist.json file Okay, and at this point, I have my request, my mock request instance, if you will. It should have all of these values, which is essentially everything that we've passed in for this to actually work. And then it should return or it will return the expected return, which is that big 
playlist.json file that we showed earlier. And then it's just returning the request mock. Now, if you recall, this came from this method up here. So now that we have that request mock, I'm, it's quotes, it's fake. So we're now saying, okay, I did all this stuff. I've authenticated. I've done all the things. I'm, I've now got a response and I've, I've got the data. I know what I'm doing now. Now it's, I'm saying, Hey, give me a new Spotify web API class because Spotify web API is the class that I'm using in order to call Spotify and like talk to it and get the playlist, get playlist data so that I can then move on and save that data, do whatever I'm going to do with it. So this creates a new instance, essentially, of Spotify Web API. So then I can do other things. Now that I have access to Spotify, I can now do anything that I need to do with Spotify because I have access to it. So this returns that instance, essentially. And now we jump back down here, we've went over all these things. Let me close this out. We've went over all these things. We've got our Spotify API. We're in good hands. All right, and now we're going to get the playlist, right? So this is essentially what we needed access to the entire time. The other stuff was literally just set up. So <laughs> a lot of times testing is all set up. So keep that in mind. So all I'm doing here is I'm saying, hey, there's a Spotify playlist. Here's the um, ID for that playlist. That's what I need. And then passing in these options because the endpoint for the playlist expects it to have a market option and we're passing that in. So that comes from here. So we have all the stuff, right? So now this is the actual request essentially to Spotify to say, give me the playlist data, all right? So now, we got the stuff we need. Now we need to move to the next step where we assert some stuff. The assertions on this are very simple. I'm not trying to do rocket science here. I'm, a, I'm just basically saying, hey, assert that the project, that the property, which is this data, the response data, assert the response has an ID, okay? And the reason why that matters is I wanna make sure that it is actually getting this ID, and then I'm doing like an assert it, uh, equals on the response ID. So at this point, I'm saying, okay, let's make sure that we also got the right playlist, right? So this is just saying, hey, we got an ID, and this is just making sure that this, that we pass to it, um, this playlist ID that we pass to it actually matches with the playlist that we get inside of this file. And that's it, that's the test. Um, it's a very simple test. The great news is that when you set up a test and it has like this, uh, this fake mock response that you need, fake and mock are the same words. So if you, when you set this up to have your mock response into it, like um, you now I can go and test all sorts of things. Like I can be able to test, hey, I can, let's test that I got some tracks back, you know, so I can add stuff to this um, test if I want to and it could be something I do in the future but right now I just wanted to do something very simple just to say hey I can go to Spotify I can get the playlist and I can validate that we have a playlist so anyways that is it that's the test hope you enjoyed this video hopefully it was helpful if you have any questions or comments please drop them down below in the comment section and I very much appreciate you watching this video and I'll see you in the next one bye